Welcome to K. Keith Photographer's Digital Images Techniques and Tips for the Novice Photographer. And now, coming at you almost live from Kansas City, USA, here's your host, Ken Keith. Well, hi and welcome back. Uh, hello to all of you in the local uh, imaging software users group and those of you who have uh, stumbled upon us <laughs> by accident on Vimeo YouTube for the photo blog and a welcome to the subscribers and we appreciate you dropping by today. Well you know I was getting ready to do a, a shoot, uh, I call it my homage or homage to Andy Warhol. If you follow the photo blog you can see the end result. But anyway I wanted to photograph uh, this uh, very beautiful uh, Campbell's soup uh, cup and tomato against a blank background and I was fishing around found a old row of studio gray uh, background, seamless background paper and when I started to roll it out <clears throat> I noticed how really beat up and dirty it was. This was right at the very uh, the beginning of the roll and so I, I moved it on off and, and got a nice clean area but it's uh, as you can see uh, in the foreground there's a a clip that holds the paper. There's uh, some smudges, uh, some just some some dirt from storage, and some crinkles. And it got me thinking about ways to clean these things up in case. Well, maybe this wasn't the. Uh, uh, I didn't have any more paper left, so I had to use this. And you know, we do uh, use seamless and other backdrop materials, uh, whether we are photographing people or objects. Well, here's a couple of ways that you can handle this if you come across the same situation. Now, the interface you're looking at right now is a CS6 uh, extended, but what I'm going to show you it will work in uh, other versions of Photoshop, and there's uh, the, the first thing that I'm going to show you will also work in any of the versions of Photoshop Elements that I know of, at least from in the way back to, to 3 anyway. So let's start out first by just duplicating the background layer. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control J uh, for Windows users, Command J for you Mac folks. And the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm <clears throat> simply going to go up to my filter menu, the noise menu, and median. Yep. Uh, when you first uh, open this up, it's it's going to be way down, and just go ahead, uh, click on your preview, make sure it's checked. Bring your radius up until you start seeing uh, everything that you want to get rid of, more or less disappear. If you like, you can actually crank it up all the way. But anyway, I don't see any junk here except maybe just a little bit of that that footing there. I can bring it up, and it's it still doesn't quite want to get rid of all of it but there it is at 185 pixels uh, your setting will look a little different uh, radius wise in elements I'm going to click OK here and now I'm going to add a layer mask to this duplicated layer so I'm going to go down here and I want to add a black mask so I'm going to hold down my alt key uh, and I wait for the this thing to, to load up all right, now as I was saying before the program rudely interrupted me, I want to add a layer mask to the duplicated layer. I'm going to click on that icon down here holding down my Alt key so I can add a black mask. And then with my brush tool, my foreground color to white, and just begin brushing over those areas that you think look bad that you want to get rid of down here. And that's perfect. Now it's also a little bit gritty. I've gotten rid of the, the really bad stuff. But you know, if, if you like, I'm just going to increase my brush tool. You can just paint over the entire background really quickly. You'll still see just a little bit of the shadows that were there uh, that I made before adjusting the studio lights. That's a great way of, of doing this. Hey, and uh, as I said, you can do this in all your versions of Photoshop Elements, 
and uh, the CS6 and, and on back. There's another way of doing this too. Let's go ahead and, and get rid of all this. I'm going to unlock my background layer. Okay. Control J once again to duplicate. I'm just going to start looking at these things. I just want to make sure my background layer is still intact. So I can go in now if I'm, uh, this is something that you can't do in Elements. So sorry about that, Elements users. But we can do this all in the full version of Photoshop. Now I'm going to pick uh, in here in the nest for your spot healing brush tool. Now if you're using uh, CS5 or 6 or whatever comes after that we have content aware and uh, we can go and, and pick that and it's, uh, it's a really good tool. We use it a lot um, uh, there for different things in uh, Photoshop uh, on, on images of people and and getting rid of unwanted objects and all and usually that it works quite well but you know one of the older tools that have been around forever is just the patch tool and uh, all we have to do is make a rough selection and drag it to another place and it, it's just going to patch very nicely control D to deselect now there's a time uh, when we use this in retouching people that we don't want the patched area to be at a hundred percent opacity for example if we want to uh, do some eye retouching uh, get rid of some bags under people's eyes or some lines we, we may want to leave just a trace of those and not uh, make it look uh, completely photoshopped so what we would do is we would then go up to edit and then we would uh, fade the patch tool. Okay, so you, you can do that now. In, in this situation, we we don't want to fade the patch tool. It's it's fine, just like it is. Uh, one thing that we do have now in CS6 and above is when we do the patch up here in your status bar, uh, you have uh, the content aware selection. There's there's two. You have normal and content aware always use content aware. We'll do that uh, one more time here. We'll just we'll, we'll grab an area right here and while the selection is still active we can go up and fade the patch selection. Once again you would seldom do that in, into um, a situation like this but you can use it in other scenarios if you need to fade the patch tool you have that ability. You have to select that from the edit menu uh, while your selection here is still active. You can see I can fade it back a little bit and, and that, that's going to restore it to normal and we, of course we wouldn't want to do that uh, here. Uh, and it works really well uh, even on a, a big area like this. I'm going to zap that over this way a little bit. And we're good there. All right. Well, I hope that is a quick tip that you'll find useful, whether working in landscapes, a, a studio setup shot like this with a seamless paper, or maybe some other types of backgrounds that may be uh, excessively wrinkled or dirty. So I hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk again soon. Take care out there and keep shooting. Bye-bye. <laughs>